This is uh, Nicholas Alexiou, Department of Sociology and um, the Hellenic American Project, Queen's College CUNY. And uh, in the series of oral history interviews, I uh, was very pleased and, and happy to have uh, today uh, a representative of uh, the new second generation of Greek Americans, um, uh, Mr. John Theodorakatos, or Rapitos Yanis Theodorakatos. Uh, John, thank you very much for accepting, for agreeing to having uh, this interview with the Hellenic American Project and be part of uh, our ongoing um, interviews uh, documenting the Greek American uh, community. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure to be here. It's very interesting to see um, uh, the new second generation uh, to uh, getting involved uh, with a uh, various aspects of uh, the Greek American and the American society. So uh, let's start first by you, you stating your name and uh, uh, the place of birth where you were born. Of course. So my name is John Theodore Kados and I am a second generation Greek American. And I was born and raised right here in Astoria, Queens, New York City. I am one of three children. I have two older sisters and my parents immigrated from Greece when they were 15 to America, where they laid down their roots, they started their family, and they've been here ever since and made a life for themselves. And today they are American citizens, but very much uh, keep the Greek culture alive in them and everything they do and sort of pass that down to us. This is very uh, interesting. Do you know uh, something about uh, the family roots? Uh when they came, for example, and uh, under what conditions there were already some relatives here, some friends uh, in, uh, in, uh, in America. I assume they came to New York first? Your yeah, of course. So it happened along those lines. My uh, father had come, he's a couple of years older than my mother. So he had come here. He le They're both from Kefalonia, which is a very beautiful island in Greece, both from the same island. And my mother and her family moved from Kefalonia when she was about five to Athens. And then when she was 15, my grandfather, her father wanted to start a better life for them because they had family here in New York in the States. So they decided to come to America and start here while the kids were still young. My father had already been here, I believe as well, because he had left Kefalonia uh, with the Navy. So he had left very young from home. So he had been here in New York already. So they met when, you know, they were both already here and it sort of happened along those lines, but there was family here. And from what I've learned from asking my parents, it usually happened where one family member would come first, see how things are. They would test the waters and see what life is like in New York. Uh, and then they would send for you to come or you would come on your own. So it happened along those lines. Well, this is a uh, very interesting because um, from what uh, I, I understand, uh, it is that uh, the grandparents were here first, right? So this is before the war or around the war, after the war. I, be I do believe this was after the war and my father's parents stayed in Greece. They never came down. He, the, his brothers and sisters, he comes from, about eight siblings, my father, and all of them except one uh, left for the States. His parents never came to the States, so the children left on their own. However, in my mother's case, she uh, immigrated here with her whole family, my uh, grandfather and my grandmother and her two sisters and brother. So they came all together as a family. Uh, but in my father's case, it was just the children that came. The parents uh, didn't come. This is about um, uh, the, the 1960s, approximately. This was in the mid to late 60s, yes. Very interesting, very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, and they always lived uh, within the Greek American community in, in, uh, in New York or another state? Uh, in our case, we were always in New York. And uh, I find it fascinating because my parents, when they first came here, <clears throat> when they first got married, I should say, the area they were living in was in Washington Heights, which they've told me was a very large Greek community at that time in the 70s. So they lived there uh, for quite a few years. And then they sort of left and they came to Queens. Uh, 
different areas of Queens Jackson Heights, a Steinway, I mean, Astoria more or less. And uh, they had my two sisters. And by the time I came along, uh, we were in Astoria and born and raised here. So uh, while you growing up, uh, you were exposed to uh, Greek culture. Uh, how was uh, the atmosphere um, uh, at home? Uh, Greek music, Greek food, uh, the language, also your schooling. Uh, yeah, everything you just mentioned. So growing up, my parents early on decided uh, they would only speak Greek to us at home because they felt we would learn English in school and it would be great to be bilingual. And to be quite honest, their English wasn't the best. So they thought we'll just speak Greek at home, which is what they did. And I thank them for it because now I am bilingual and I speak Greek fluently. I can read and write. I went to Greek school after school because I went to public school, but I went to Greek school after. And the Greek community was very prevalent and very much active in my life growing up. I, from a very early age, I would say from about five, I would associate with the Greek community and especially growing up in Astoria back then, uh, it was considered Little Athens. It was just known that it was the majority of, if you told somebody you live in Astoria, they would say, are you Greek? Because it was just, it kind of went hand in hand. And my mother cooked nothing but Greek food in the house, Greek music playing all the time. And she really exposed me to Greek movies as well. We would watch so many movies. I remember from a young kid watching Aliki Vuyuklaki movies or movies uh, with Psalti and these Greek actors, for those who don't know, very big names in cinematic history. And it was always prevalent growing up, no matter what we did, we were with our family. I had a Greek friends from an early age, the neighborhood. I always remember where we lived in Astoria was, I would say 80% Greek. So we all knew each other. There was sort of that family atmosphere when you went out with your neighbors, it was just all around. But you also went to public school and uh, at some point uh, you had some classmates or friends who weren't Greek. How, how they understood you as a Greek? You had any issues of discrimination with other ethnicities or races? You know, I can't say that I faced discrimination, fortunately, uh, for being Greek. I think it was very much celebrated. I remember as a kid, uh, there were many Greek kids in my school, but there were other ethnicities, nationalities as well too. And we would always celebrate that and embrace that. Even in public school, we would have multicultural festivals. My mom would cook Greek dishes. I would bring them into school. I would tell them what um, piropitakia, which are cheese pies or spinach pies are. And I would bring them in or she would cook other dishes as well too. So it was pretty great. Uh, I was always, I always, when I, even at that young age, when somebody asked me, where are you from? I would say I'm Greek American. So it was always something that I celebrated and I felt from an early age. And this is how you identify yourself right? as, a, as a Greek American, right? So. Absolutely. I consider myself a Greek American 100%. Well, growing up also, you had the chance to visit Greece and, and in particular, um, you know, Kefalonia, they are, they oh, yeah. are. So my older sister, Christina, uh, was born and raised here along with my other sister. However, in the early 90s, she was in her early 20s and she went to Greece on vacation. She met her now husband, fell in love and decided she wanted to move to Greece. Over 25, almost 30 years later, they are still happily married and have three beautiful kids and they live in Crete. And she uh, absolutely adores it. She loved, and he was in the Navy, I should say. So that's why she moved there because he was in the Greek Navy. So she sort of, you know, said, I love it down here. I want to move. So back to your question about me visiting, she moved very early, early nineties when I was still a kid. So we would travel every summer to go see her and we would go, she was living in Athens at the time. We would go to Athens, we would see her. And then we would take the boat and we would go to Kefalonia and we would see my grandparents which was beautiful for me. I have the most amazing memories of the village uh, where my father lived and the house and my grandmother and my cousins were there. And I can still almost 
you know, when you can still smell a memory almost, I don't know if that makes sense. You can almost feel it. You can go back in time. That's how I feel when I think about those summers in Greece. And it was a very common thing back then, all my other Greek friends, you would literally go to Greece for two months, school would close. And from end of June through early September, you would be in Greece, you would pack your bags and you would go for two months. And it was just a common thing and it was expected and it was, yeah, it was great. So this is one of the reasons probably because your Greek is so well, because you had the chance uh, to, to speak earlier uh, in Greek. And uh, I'm very impressed that uh, a new second generation uh, uh, person you know, is so um, fluent. Uh, I, I have to thank my parents because it's all their work. I didn't do anything. They spoke Greek to us uh, till this day. Uh, that's all we speak to each other. And when I would go to Greece, the kids that lived there were shocked because they said, you speak Greek so well, you know about the music, you know about the movies. How can this be? You live in America. And I said, yes, I may live in America, but I consider myself you know, at heart, a Greek person, a Greek guy. And I, I mean, I am Greek American because I was born and raised here. So to be fair, but the Greek culture, the, um, the ethnicity, everything about it, the traditions is always in me. How, how was uh, the reception you had from um, friends and relatives uh, as an American, as, as a Greek American or? Yeah. Oh, no. Originally, I mean, initially, I should say, they just considered me an American. They didn't even take me, to be honest, seriously as a Greek, a Greek American, not even. They just considered me somebody from New York that came to visit. And then when I started speaking and I was informed about what, you know, was going on in the country, they were like, okay, you know, maybe not everybody is... It sounds funny, but I think they had this notion that they expect you to speak broken Greek, to mispronounce things, to not say them well, which I mean, look, a lot of kids that I grew up with maybe necessarily don't speak Greek as well as I do, but they still very much love the Greek community and the culture. I just, I also, I should mention, always had until this day, I mean, I'm 36, till this day, I have this hunger to better myself when it comes to being Greek. And I'm constantly learning new words that I maybe didn't know. And I look them up and I want to utilize, uh, utilize them in my vocabulary and incorporate them. So I'm constantly trying to better myself, uh, learn to read better Greek, learn to write better Greek. So I've, I always had that. Even at that young age, I loved music. And sometimes in music, they incorporate certain words that you may not use in your everyday vocabulary. And if I heard something like that, I would go to my mom and I would say, well, what does this mean in Greek? What does this mean? And she would tell me, and I was so fascinated. I always wanted to learn more when it came to being Greek. Very, very interesting. And um, do you still visit? Uh, do you still, when you have a chance as an adult now, do you still visit Greece? You know, uh, absolutely. the last time I went was two years ago and I sort of, told myself, I said, all my American friends have been to other islands, to more islands in Greece than I have because I'm Greek. So when I go, I go to see family. I don't get to explore the Greece they get to see. So I said, I'm going to go, I'm going to see family, but I'm going to see two other islands I have not seen. And I was able to go to Sandorini and to Mykono, which were beautiful. But I also went back to Kefalonia and I actually stayed at my grandmother's home in the village. She's passed now. And so is my grandfather. So my friend and I, we stayed there. And if I tell you, it was so amazing because I remembered how to get everywhere from her house to town on foot. It's very close. Just from the memories I had as a child when I would go there when I was 10, 11 years old. Uh, so the last time I went was two years ago. Uh, and now with COVID, I, I mean, I didn't go last summer, but I'm hoping to go again because I would love to see my sister. And I just love going to Greece. It's a so, magical place. So you're born here. You're an American of, uh, of uh, Greek descent. But mm -hmm. what does Greece mean to you? What is Greece for you? I mean, when you think of Greece, you say it is a country, it is a second country, it is my parents' country. It's my second country, I think, is the best way to describe it, because when I think of Greece, I sort of have that hand in hand with 
what I consider being Greek. And when I think of what it means to be Greek, it's, it's odd because it's my everyday life, 50-50, I consider myself, 50% of me is Greek, 50% of me is American. The food I eat, the music I listen to, the shows I see, the places I go to, the friends I have, the family I have. So for me, Greece is my second country. It's sort of my home away from home, I guess you can say. It's the place that you know holds a special place in my heart that I've been going to for many years since I was a kid and I was exposed to it. And it's sort of, I mean, I'm sure we'll touch on this in a little bit, but it's also the Greek history uh, is part of what inspired me to become a writer. So, uh, see, and then you, you continue your studies, you went to American colleges and universities. Uh, tell us about your studies a little bit and, and uh, uh, your presence there uh, as an American, as a Greek, uh, your, your friends and, 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 and classmates knew that you were Greek. How was uh, the situation in the college years? You know, everyone always knew I was Greek and I've yet to meet a person it's funny, they're my friends or the people that I've had interaction with throughout the years, whenever I would meet somebody and say I'm Greek, they're almost fascinated. The first thing I hear is, oh my gosh, I love Greek food. Can you give me a good restaurant to go to? Or do you know this singer? You know, I like her. She's great. Or, you know, that's amazing. I just always heard the best things. And even before the college years, I should say, growing up as a teenager here in Astoria, it was known as Little Athens. It was very Greek oriented, the cafes, the restaurants, the bars, everything. So at that age, I would say around 17, 18, maybe a little before college, when I started going out with my friends who were predominantly Greek, there was such a sense of pride amongst the Greek community and doing things that were very Greek oriented. I was in the Greek club in high school and we would march in the parade every year we would dress up, we would go out after, we would go to the Greek cafes, we would even back then we would go to Greek concerts, we would talk about it in school the next day. There was very much that sense of pride and we would hang out with all the other kids, you know, from the Greek schools. I think that's sort of uh, something that is not as heightened anymore, not as prevalent, but when I was a teenager, it was a beautiful thing because there was such excitement to be part of the Greek community and it was a big thing. And even as I got older, as you're mentioning, in the college years, much more so, I very much took pride in just sort of immersing myself in the Greek culture because now I was of age and I can go out and I can do all these things and I can sort of take pride in my culture as an adult. It took on a different meaning as I got older. And it was something that I think brought excitement to my parents because we were keeping me and my other friends we were keeping the traditions and the culture alive within the Greek community, and they very much appreciated that, and they liked it. Interesting. And um, also, uh, Cephalonia, they have one uh, of the largest, probably, uh, association, uh, Kephalos, which is a, a, a strong Of course. Uh, in, in order to see if there is uh, any ethnic attachment with the community? Are you a member of any association regarding? I used to go to the Kefalo quite a bit years ago. I haven't gotten many years, unfortunately, but all those sort of associations were great because you would go and you would meet people from the same place you're from and you would make friends and you would have commonality and you would sort of grow even more as a community. So those uh, associations were wonderful and very much something that I, took part in when I was uh, younger and we would go to Greek dances and we would do all those things. So it was truly, it was a great time, yeah. I think those associations, and they're still around, mind you, and it's great. They really do bond you and they sort of uh, create a family unit and a family atmosphere outside of your immediate family. And that's what they're there for. And it's, uh, it's a great thing to go there and to sort of feel unity amongst your fellow Greek community? Uh, overall, the Greek-American community, um, it goes um, over a tremendous uh, demographic change. For the first time, the American-born uh, people like yourself are numerically more than the immigrant generation. Mm -hmm. So 
And uh, the institution that we just uh, uh, mentioned, uh, like, like Kefalos and others, all ethnic associations, they are institutions established by the Indian generation and more or less uh, serve the interest or, or the, the, you know, the, the policies of, of the Indian generation. Now, you as a young generation, do you see uh, other ways or the, uh, there is a possibility to find other types of organizing uh, yourselves? And how how, how the, the new second generation uh, meets through what organization? It is the professional uh, yeah. organizations uh, that more important to you than the ethnic how that works for you that's a it's a very good question and a very big question uh i don't know how much it pertains to me to be quite honest because i am second generation but i come from a time when i valued the sort of uh traditions and the culture and i still keep that alive with my social circle and the things that i do I think for the younger generation, I have nieces, for example, who are 17 and 15. So them coming up, I think it'll be interesting to see how they keep those traditions alive. I'm sure it'll be very different than what I did. I think what you brought up is a very good possibility. I think keeping sort of the professional network will be now the new way to sort of communicate and not communicate, but associate with other maybe Greek Americans and find common ground. Because unfortunately, I feel a lot of what sort of existed when I was growing up in terms of, you know, doing certain activities or going certain places to feel like you're part of the Greek community just don't exist anymore because demographically things are changing, neighborhoods are changing. It's, I mean, Astoria has become like a mini Manhattan. It's completely different. And there are not that many Greek people here as much as there used to be anymore. And it's a whole different crowd that's moving in. You still see sort of remnants of the Greek culture and the community, which is wonderful. And I think it's interesting and it'll be very interesting to see how the younger kids coming up will keep the Greek community going. Uh, from what I have understood from my nieces and from young kids that I talk to, they very much still, they say they like to be part of the Greek community and they do have Greek friends. Maybe it's not as much as, you know, the way it was in my day in the early 2000s, but I think it also comes down to your household. And I think if you keep those traditions, you know, you have to start from the top. If you keep those traditions alive as a unit in your own family, your kids will always have that and they'll look for that when they go out. So I think though, it will be a little bit different to answer your question in terms of, you know, maybe the younger generation won't go to Kefalo that they'll do something else. It'll be more of a professional organizing that will unify them. Interesting. So, uh, I mean, what are the, some of the of the differences that you mentioned? This is an interesting thing, growing up in Astoria. And of course, I would like to hear uh, also what Astoria means to you, but also to see how Astoria has changed from an ethnic enclave. Now it is a more diverse, uh, more upscale, uh, okay. a lot of new units and uh, new people who come from uh, Manhattan and, 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 and live in Astoria bringing uh, various cultures, uh, food, yeah. music, uh, interactions, etc. So tell us about Astoria and what a young person can do or did in Astoria growing up as a, as a Greek American. Well, I think, especially now, Astoria for anyone is just the greatest place because it has just, it's a mini Manhattan, it's changed so much. For me, when I see it now, I sort of, you know, when I'm walking down certain blocks or going places, I see it the way it used to be because those are my memories. And I see the oldest story, even though certain places don't exist anymore. But for me, it's always going to be a safe haven, that place where I was born and where I had my formative years and I made my friends and I found a sense of self with my family, with my friends, just everything about it is something that's gonna always be in my heart. And like you said, it has changed a lot. A lot of people from Manhattan have moved in. And I would say over the past 10, 12, close to 15 years, it's become so diverse and diversity is good. You, we can sort of, you know, change it. But on the other hand, I'm sort of 
of two mindsets. I don't want to change it too much to where we erase the culture of what it's known for and what it used to be. And we completely just, you know, gentrify everything about it because I think that's what made a story of beautiful. It was this little neighborhood that was known for very much a Greek community, Greek restaurants and all those things. So it's changed a lot. I'm sure it'll change even more as the years go on, because that's just everything changes in life. You go to any neighborhood, nothing stays the same forever, unfortunately. But for me personally, it will always be my home and the place that I grew up and I made my memories. I mean, it's crazy to think, but I was born and raised here in Astoria. 36 years later, I'm still here. So it's it's a pretty special thing. Um, uh, when you, you are in, in college, uh, you you were aware, or maybe you need it, maybe you didn't need it, but you were aware of any uh, scholarships that the Greek American community offered to Greek American um, uh, students or any internships uh, later that you, you needed? I was not, you know, I did not need, uh, I didn't go that route, the scholarship. I wasn't really aware, to be honest, if they were offering scholarships at the time for Greek American children, students, uh, or internships, to be honest. So I'm not really familiar if that's something that was around maybe when I went there. But like I said, even in college, I was always, you know, it's funny, I always say, you'll, oh, if you're Greek, you'll always gravitate towards a Greek person. And I always just naturally, even in college, gravitated towards the Greek community. I could always find them wherever they are. They're never too far away from you. Um, also, uh, in the recent years, it is a debate among uh, the members of the community as far as concern uh, the right to vote uh, from the place of residence. Of course, all Greek people have the right to vote, but it is about the convenience to vote while we're here and also participate uh, in the political um, arena of Greece. Uh, what are the thoughts of the new generation um, of you about uh, voting and participating in Greek politics? So the question is, if we're living in New York to vote in Greece, you're referring to, correct? Yes. Yeah. And, 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 and yeah, and, and get involved into, into getting involved. Yeah, I'm for it. I'm for it and my thinking behind it and my rationale is that, like I said earlier, we very much keep the Greek culture alive and we follow what goes on in the world there and we're very much active. And most Greeks might also have property in Greece or they have family there, so they live there sometime of the year. Maybe it's only in the summer, but they also have property there. So I think if that's the case, you know, you should, you. I don't see it bad being able to vote in Greece, to be honest with you. I don't see the harm in it, to be honest. I think it would be beneficial and it would be a good thing. Okay. Interesting. Uh, also, um, the thing is to see uh, how uh, the community uh, supports uh, uh, other, I mean, its, its members. So uh, as, as, as you, you grew up, uh, that's why I asked the question before to see if the community were able to inform, and and you said that maybe this is not uh, this is not the case. You weren't aware of of this, but in any case, uh, do you think that uh, because Greece went through a crisis, uh, was the community ready to support uh, the crisis people who came from Greece? Because I'm sure you realize that as, at some point in Astoria had uh, an increase uh, in, uh, in, in uh, Greeks, born in Greece, who came because of the economic crisis in Greece. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the community had the, the ability to, to, to support them emotionally or financially? Or, or we failed to do that? That's a tough question. I can't say with certainty that we were prepared for something like that to happen, you know, in our backyard sort of, speak and to sort of be able to help out however i think we did the best we could mm -hmm. but it's such a big problem it was such a big problem and still is mm -hmm. that 
I don't know how much help we could have done here. I believe we wanted to try our best, but it, it's it's tough. It's tough to sort of, you know, be able to help someone all the way in a situation like that and give them what they need because there's only so much we can do as a community, as a people, it's, it's a lot. So I think everyone probably did the best they could with what they knew. And, but it's a, it's a, that's a very big conversation and it's a, it's a very big issue. Unfortunately, it's, it's very hard. That's a tough one. So, uh, you think that uh, at some point uh, you, you, you see yourself uh, going back and living in Greece, working and living there? Oh, I don't know about working and living in Greece. I love it. Don't get me wrong. And I always say one day I would love to potentially retire in Greece. However, now as a young professional, as much as I love Greece, I think my opportunities here for what I'm doing might be a little bit more accessible to me living here in the States, I do have more opportunities. And this is also coming from having family in Greece and talking to them. And, you know, you mentioned the economic crisis and that whole issue. So it would be hard for me to sort of move to Greece as a young professional and start my life there. I have a couple of friends who have done that. They've moved there and they're happy. I don't know if I would be able to do that, but I would one day, I have thought about living in Greece. I just don't know if I would do it now, but one day I would love to live in Greece. So uh, let's talk about uh, the two years uh, that we suffered the pandemic and the lockdown. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, before that, uh, we had uh, the, the discussions within uh, the American society regarding uh, uh, race and ethnicity and uh, uh, Black Lives Matter. Yeah. Uh, how the young generation living and growing up in a diverse environment uh, uh, experience all of that? Tell us about uh, the, the ethnic and racial issues uh, we have in, in the American society and, and also how you experience the pandemic. Oof. Those were two things that, you know, I'll start with the pandemic. I think that threw us all for a loop. Nobody was really expecting it. I remember being at work and COVID had just come to New York and I had no idea what it was. And my company said to us, we're gonna send you home for two weeks. We'll see you in two weeks when this is all said and done. Two years later, and I was still working at home remote. So it was crazy. I don't think that anybody was prepared for stores being shut down not being able to buy essential products for your house, waiting in line for two hours to buy groceries, all those things. It's definitely one of those things that's gonna be in the history books. Where were you when COVID happened, sort of speaking? And it was a very hard thing to sort of wrap your head around. You couldn't see family, you couldn't see your friends. You, your everyday life was completely taken away from you. All the things you value and you cherish and the little things you couldn't do anymore. And from my perspective and from friends that I have, it truly made me appreciate those things that much more, being able to see your family and your friends and the little moments, being able to have a cup of coffee with somebody outside. So that was very difficult. I think especially for the younger children that are in their formative years now, I think they might have took it a little bit harder because they're in school, they're young, how much can they learn from a Zoom conversation, a Zoom classroom? It's not the same because they're not only learning when they go to school, you know, their ABCs, mathematics, things like that. They're learning how to socially interact with one another. They're developing their people skills, which is something that you need to be in the presence of other children to do. So I think it did a little bit of damage to them, unfortunately, but I think kids are resilient and they do bounce back just like we do. I personally uh, kept my head pretty strong and I said, okay, this too shall pass. And, you know, it may take a little bit longer. And there, I had moments where I said, here we go again, you know, we're getting better, but now we're about, you know, two steps back. So it was a little bit hard. I was getting frustrated, but you just have to sort of find the positive in everything and see the light at the end of the tunnel. So that was very hard. 
And the other issue that was happening at the same time you mentioned, you know, the racial tension, Black Lives Matter, that was another very serious issue that was going on in our country, in our community, right here. I witnessed so many things. And that was hard because now I think in the day and age we live in, with social media, everything, you know, we get news that much faster. Everything happens so quick. We all have a cell phone, we all record things. So we're seeing things in real time. Whereas years ago, things like this would happen, unfortunately, but you really wouldn't hear about them until later or they would be swept under the rug. Now it's in our face. And that whole situation was sort of presented to us and we couldn't turn away, nor should we turn away from it anymore. So that was very hard. And being somebody that grew up in a diverse neighborhood and having friends of different ethnicities, different colors, what have you, it was hard to watch. And it was uncomfortable at times, but we need to get uncomfortable sometimes so we could really understand something and face it. Because if something doesn't make us uncomfortable and we don't face it, we're never going to move past it or make it better. So I think that's what happened in that situation. And we needed that wake up call and we all needed to say, okay, enough is enough. Very interesting. But I think New Yorkers, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I think especially here, New Yorkers are very tough and we're very resilient. So we bounce back pretty quick. I agree, I agree on that. Um, I would like you to, uh, you to mention one or two Greek values that you really, you know, you think we should keep it as a community and also transmit them to, to the next generation, to you and to the, the generation uh, you know, following you. What is something of, uh, that, uh, that you think is worth uh, saving uh -huh. and, and keeping as, uh, as a tradition, as, as a value, as a Greek value? There are so many things, all the traditions, to be honest with you. I remember, again, as a little kid, every year a tradition we had on March 25th, which coincidentally falls tomorrow, very big day for us, Greek Independence Day, uh, we would get ready and we would go to the parade and we would watch it every year. And that was a tradition we did. And you would see everyone you knew. So that is something that I would love to see continued. Do even something as small as going to a parade because you really feel a sense of culture when you're there. The Greek cuisine is another thing that I would love to see continue. The language, I always tell my sisters, well, my sister here, because my sister in Greece, obviously, she speaks Greek to her kids. However, I tell my sister here, speak Greek to your daughters so they can keep that, you know, and have it in the back of their head so they can always have that. There are just so many wonderful things, even going to Greece. I think if you can, if you can financially go to Greece and explore that with your family, I think you should always take your children to see their culture and learn their roots. It's a very important thing. I loved going to Greece every summer as a kid. I can't tell you. So I think, yeah, there are so many traditions, but those are some of my favorites that I would definitely keep. And I, I would love for the younger generation to sort of carry on and pass down. Interesting. And um, in concluding um, uh, our this wonderful uh, interview, I would like uh, uh, to tell us a few things about what you do. What, what is your, 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 your line that you, uh, addressing every day, struggling. <laughs> yeah, so I work for a nonprofit company downtown. It's a faith based organization, and we do grant making to other faith based organizations internationally. And it's a fantastic company. We do a lot of great work. And then my passion is writing books. And I just, as we said, you know, I just released my first children's book. Hopefully, the first of many more to come. And we'll have a chance to discuss your book. Yeah. Uh, pretty soon, and going to be uh, absolutely uh, at the Hellenic American Project website. Your your interview uh, under the special features and, and and writers, and people can see um, the story uh, regarding your book, which is uh, I have it right here. And we have a chance. Um, Growing up also, um, or later in your life, uh, you're aware of any other Greek-American writers, but we'll discuss that later. But if you, if you knew uh, any Greek-American uh, authors, 
so far? As a child, I don't recall what I do recall I was inspired by as a kid was always not necessarily Greek American writers or Greek writers or sort of, you know, Greek books. I was very much inspired by Greek mythology and sort of that whole history and learning about, you know, Greece itself. And that's, I, I every year when I would go to Greece, I just would tell my mother she would have to buy me books on mythology or the Greek gods or the history of certain cities in Greece. And I would love reading books and literature like that. I was always very much fascinated by that. Even till this day, I think we have such a beautiful and rich history that is so diverse. And that's really from the literary uh, aspect, something that inspired me a great deal, I have to say. Interesting. So uh, this is a non-profit organization. Um, how, how difficult it is to be in a non-profit organization in the heart of capitalism and you know, next to Wall Street, for example, right? <laughs> which is making profits or maximizing profits. How, how, does, how that works? What are some of the challenges uh, you face? I have to say, I mean, I know it's kind of ironic. We're a nonprofit and we're on Wall Street. Uh, however, we also, I mean, we're able to sort of do the work we do nonprofit and help other people because we also are involved in real estate, which sort of funds our grant making and sort of helps us along those lines. So we're fortunate. We haven't faced that many difficulties. I have to say it is tough and it can be tough. But like I said, I think, you know, we're doing such a great work and the real estate aspect, you know, we're involved in that, which pretty much is able to fund what we do for the grant making, which is great. So we haven't faced too many difficulties, I would say. I mean, who hasn't? But we've been pretty lucky, actually. We've been doing and now my company has been doing the grant making for about, I want to say about 13 years. Yeah, about 13 years on Wall Street. It's a tough place to be, but it's uh, it's great. Uh, thank you very much uh, for this interview. And uh, thank we'll you. you discussing uh, your marvelous uh, book, which, uh, as I said, and I will say it again later, that I find it very hard to write for children. And uh, I want to congratulate. Uh, thank you, know, you very much. For that. Um, and let's say something in Greek because I want to document uh, the, 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 how uh, affluent you are in Greek and I would like to document that. Uh, at least your name or something you would like to say in Greek. What do you want to say? Where are you? Where are αλλά και δύο, δύο μου γονείς από την Κεφαλονιά είναι και τι να πω για την Ελλάδα, είναι μέσα στη καρδιά μου πάντα, μέσα στη ψυχή μου, στο μυαλό μου, ε, τα εθήματα, η κουλτούρα μας είναι κάτι που πάντα τα κρατάω μέσα μου και μαζί μου και ελπίζω και εγώ στο μέλλον, αν κάνω και παιδιά θα τα συνεχίσω και χαίρομαι. Thank you very much. Yeah, this is very important to see. Um... Uh, the new second generation speak um, Greek so well and understand Greek, uh, having this strong uh, ethnic identity and attachment. Uh, uh, I think this uh, is identity is very important. Very encouraging, very encouraging to see that. It is, and I think identity, no matter what ethnic group you belong to, is very important, and you should always be proud of where you're from. I, growing up, people, I mean, I don't know if you can ask that now, but people would always ask me, where are you from? And I would say, well, you know, I'm Greek American. It was a very prideful thing. I never just said I'm from America because my parents came here from Greece and I was so proud to be a Greek American yeah. uh, child. You see, so great. Uh, you see that uh, uh, Greeks in America, they have come a long way because in our days, you know, uh, it is very compatible to be both an American and, and, and Greek. And, and that wasn't the case uh, always with- It America. wasn't. And I think with many uh, ethnic groups, I think when you came to the States years ago, you would have to identify as American so you can get work, so you can live. It was very different. Now, 
and for years, I would say it's become more acceptable to sort of, you know, embrace your culture and your background and not fear discrimination. I mean, back in the day, people would change their last names to have their last name sound more Americanized, which I mean, now we don't do that really anymore, but it is something that happened in the past. So we have changed uh, quite a bit and come a long way, which is great. Gian Fedorakato, thank you very much. Uh, I thank you, Sefari Soparapolia. For this interview with the yes. Great American Project. And uh, uh, we'll continue discussing your book uh, in, in a few minutes. Absolutely, I can't wait. Thank you.